Hi, my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, Savage Reads. I have read some of the most amazing books. It has been a really good reading week, so I'm very excited to talk about those. But first, quick update on my embroidery projects because I'm not gonna stop. So, I finished another project. So this one is, I just went crazy with the flowers. I just filled it in, I don't know, let's see, filled in all of this with as many flowers as I could. Not really a scene, but just florals. So that was a fun one. I had fun. It was very fun to be able to be a little more random and repetitive. And now I am working on another project and I've just kind of started. So I've got to do all the leaves up here, but I've got this bottom part done and we'll see. I'm excited. So Let's jump in to some of the amazing books that I have read the last week. The first book that I want to talk about was a recommendation from Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And if you haven't checked out his channel already, make sure to do it. He's got some of the best book reviews out there. So I picked up the book Kaikeya by Vaishnavi Patel. This is a feminist retelling of a story from Hindu mythology. Now, this is not something that I have any background on. I had no idea what I was getting into, and I'm not sure if that improved the reading experience or if it would have been better had I known the story and what I was getting into, because this was great. We are following her life as a princess and also as someone who the gods do not answer her prayers. And we are following her marriage as the third wife to a powerful man. And what happens after that? There is a lot that is going on in this story. And I feel like had I known the source material, maybe I would have understood some of it, but not knowing the source material is also really great for going into this book because I can connect with the main character without any sort of preconceived notions of who she is supposed to be. And I really liked that. I found her very easy to connect with, even through some of her decisions that were not things that I would do. I think my only thing that distracted a little from the reading experience was there was a lot of foreshadowing throughout the book. And I think if you had any knowledge of this story prior to getting into the book, you probably would have appreciated it. But me not knowing anything was kind of thrown off by her talking about her childhood and then switching to, if only I had known that on the battlefield. You know, just for me, that didn't work super well all the time, but Honestly, I really liked this. I loved getting into a mythological retelling that is something very unknown to me. And I enjoyed learning these stories through a woman's lens and I thought it was really well done. It really had that feeling of an epic tale that could last for a long time, which I think is important when you are doing a retelling of an old myth. You really want something that feels somewhat timeless, even when presenting a new take on it. And I thought this did that. So I really enjoyed it. If you have been doing all the Greek myth retellings, I think you should try this one out. Now, Erin at Erin Read a Book recommended the book To End All Wars, A Story of Loyalty and Rebellion, 1914 through 1918 by Adam Hochschild. Now, I have read a book by Adam Hochschild before, and I had read King Leopold's Ghost, A Story of Greed, Terror, and Heroism in Colonial Africa, and that was a five-star, impactful, meaningful read. Such an amazing piece of nonfiction, and I am so shocked that I haven't read more by this author. Now that I have read To End All Wars, I'm gonna have to read a lot more by Adam Hochschild because this book was excellent. If you couldn't guess by the title, this is talking about the First World War, and it does go through the history of the First World War, but it takes it from such an interesting lens where it's really focused on the people that objected to the war and the people who refused to fight in the war. 
and the people who called attention to why the war was not worth it. And I thought this book was so great in pulling together this narrative from so many different sources. It wasn't just oh, these are just the conscientious objectors. No, it was everyone from politicians to soldiers, but people who could see how this war was pointless and could see that it was going to just lead to worse things to come. And I thought that pulling that all together into a narrative that felt cohesive was really quite a feat. I think that it was such a worthwhile read because not only does it give you that history and the people who objected to the war, but it makes you think about your personal stance on war and when is that ever justified? And you can think about how propaganda and group mentality affects your position on things. It has a lot of things that really cause you to reflect on your own views. I think so often you hear these war stories and you hear of people's bravery as soldiers and nurses and people that were on these front lines and it's not to take away from that but just the amount of bravery that people had to have to stand up against this and say no um, was incredible. There were people that were being killed because they refused to fight in a war that they found to be morally objectionable and so I thought this book was so good. Highly recommend. This will end up on my list of best nonfiction. This book was absolutely phenomenal and I highly, highly recommend. Thank you so much, Erin. This recommendation from the channel Raspberry Reads, so I will make sure to link that down below. And I picked up Flight Behavior by Barbara Kingsolver. Now I've read a few Barbara Kingsolver books in the past, and typically she is just a solid, really good writer. And so I had a somewhat high expectations for this, and they weren't really disappointed. This was a very interesting book. This is following our main character, Della Robia, who is living in a small town farming community and is not very happy with her life. As she's about to make a bad decision, she sees what she can only describe as a miracle, and it is millions of monarch butterflies that have landed in the trees and on their farm. And soon this becomes a big deal. People are coming from far and wide to see it. Scientists are coming to study it. And we have a lot of talk about the science and climate change that could cause this kind of thing to happen. And you also get Della Robia's insights into her life and how to find meaning. And I thought there were a lot of elements that were really well done in this book. As always, Barbara Kingsolver, her writing is great. You feel like you're getting something somewhat profound. I thought that it was really well done for that. The reason that this book would not give a five star for me is that the book starts with Della Robia planning on cheating on her husband. And I mean, you could debate that she already had been cheating on her husband. Since that is how the book starts, it was really hard for me to work to a place where I was okay with Della Robia as a character. I feel like that really put the odds against her in me liking her and connecting with her as a character. And I think that this book kind of hinged on that. And so that was the only thing, just throwing me right in with, come on, you could do anything else. This is what you're gonna do. So throughout the book, the main character felt very, boy crazy, I guess I want to say. And it's not to say that there aren't people who deal with that, jumping to the next best thing, always looking for something. But overall, this book was good. If you like Barbara Kingsolver, you'll probably pick this up and enjoy it. But there were just a couple things with Della Robia that made it hard for me to connect with her. I think it had an interesting perspective, trying to show the perspective of people barely making ends meet in a small farming community and being told that they need to be better conservationists and take care of the environment better and how there's such a disconnect in what they're being told and what is actually feasible for their day-to-day -day lives. I can completely see that, but just occasionally there were a few things that just didn't feel like they rang very true. Other than that, this book was good. So. I had a good time. I just was every once in a while I'd get a twinge of, ooh, I don't really like her. Oh, why does she say that? Oh, why is she doing that? But other than that, I thought this book was really good. 
If you like Barbara Kingsolver, read this book. If you haven't read any Barbara Kingsolver, I wouldn't start with this one. Now, I have heard quite a few people talking about this book, but the reason it ended up on my list was Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, and I read the book Evil Eye by Ita Froom. This book is following Yara, who was raised in a very difficult family in a very conservative environment, and she feels like she has it made that she married a good man who she can raise her kids with. She was able to get a college degree and she is working and she has all these things that on paper sound like she's able to do the things she wants to do, but she still is feeling very oppressed by the actual realities of her relationship and her culture and the expectations that she has had for herself and other people have had for her. It is an interesting look at dealing with the clash of different cultures and her coming from a Palestinian family and living in the United States and feeling that there is oppression on both sides of those cultural divides and where you fit in when you were born in the middle of those two things. This book deals a lot with generational trauma. It talks a lot about relationship dynamics and getting proper support for your mental health. I really related to parts of this in the struggles that Yara has trying to understand how much autonomy she has in her life, what she really wants to be doing with her life, where she wants to put her focus, and I thought that it was really relatable some of her struggles with her mental health. Now there were a lot of things that, that were very much outside of my realm of experience and I think that they were dealt with really well and talked about in a really interesting sort of way. So. I think this book was really good. I had read the book A Woman Is No Man by the same author and I think I like this one better. I think Evil Eye was a little bit stronger. It really pulled together everything and I think it was done really well. I think that Evil Eye was done better but both of those books Evil Eye and A Woman Is No Man had such similar themes. I almost wish I hadn't read A Woman Is No Man because I kept kind of getting echoes of it in Evil Eye. And I think that on its own, Evil Eye is a really strong book. But I think if you read both, there's too much of a crossover. You get that overbearing mother-in-law, you get that problematic marriage, you get the clash with different cultures. And I think that having both of them, they might over time kind of merge in my head a little bit and it, they were different books but they did have so many similar elements and a very similar feel and so i do think that if you haven't read any book but you tough room i think you should read evil eye and i think if you read both make sure there's a good separation between the two because i do think there is some overlap but overall this was a really good book I liked watching the character growth as Yara came to terms with what was going on in her life and learned how to express her feelings over time and advocate for what she wanted and needed. And as I told my husband, this just made me really, really grateful for having a wonderful supportive partner who is always there to listen, validate my feelings and help me with wherever I would like to go in life. And so that was really nice not to find a positive through a fictional character's pain but it did make me feel very grateful for my husband and that is what i have read the last week if you have any thoughts on these books please leave them down in the comments below make sure to check out some of the channels that i mentioned there are links for them down below as well and i will see you all on the next one thanks